This program was first broadcast on Canterbury's access media station, Plains FM, and was made with the assistance of New Zealand On Air. Welcome to Babes Listen. You're joined by your hosts, Nat and Jess. Two fitness professionals from New Zealand Authentic, they talking everything health and wellness. You're welcome. Welcome to Babes Listen. <laughs> My name is Nat and I'm here with Jess and this is episode number 97. Okay, first of all, I don't say my name is Nat and this is Jess <laughs> and I don't give the episode number, but it is 97, so that's pretty good. Uh, hopefully you all thought that was me, but I just can't wait to post something about this episode because <laughs> Jess is wearing a f***ing wig. <laughs> oh, she said a swear word already. Listen, hey. we're less than a minute into the recording. Hey, Dinanette, how are you? I'm, I'm very well, yes. So by, How's the wig? Uh, well, by request, I am wearing it for today's I recording. It, yeah. She did. Thank you very much. Um, just losing my voice over here, so one moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow, yeah, I have really got into character, haven't I? Um, (laughs) Oh, my God, yeah. That's what I do. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, So, uh, yes, this wig came about from a very, very fun Saturday evening. So please fill us in on what happened on Saturday evening. You're me. You can fill us in if you want. This is going to get very confusing. (laughs) No, I can do it. So Saturday was my farewell from the personal training um, group. Wait, what? Team. Team. (laughs) Um, From the PT team. And it was such a good night. Like, it was hilarious. I honestly don't think I've laughed that much in a long time. So you, uh, so it was held at someone's, house, one of the other PTs, and you'd arrived before... Yeah, I arrived kind of early because I had, like, lots of food and stuff to yep. cook and stuff, and um, and then... Well, let's start... Do you want me to, like... Yeah, so it started because SE had... So about three weeks ago, the my joke was, you should all dress up as me, <laughs> or you should all have something that, like, represents me, you know? Like, you know, I don't know, like a scrunchie or whatever. And I wasn't a, I wasn't a part of this. No, you didn't know about this yeah, convo. Yeah. I think it was just to like a couple of the male PTs. And then I thought that was whiskey for a second there, Nico. <laughs> He's just pouring water into a cup and I actually thought that was whiskey. <laughs> Oh. Wow, that's stunning. Um, anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so Essie grabbed my long puffer and, like, took it out of the car, and I was like, why you got that for? And he was like, no. Um, he actually told me straight away, he's like, oh, Dan needs it. And I was like, is he dressing up as me? And he was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. And then I, like, see Jess, Holly, Polly, Dan, just the four of you, eh, mm-hmm. walking, and they're all just... At first glance, you couldn't tell you were me, right? Because you're just, like, wearing different types of clothes. Like, one is in, like, just fitness gear. The other one's ultra comfortable. And you have a freaking wig on. Like, <laughs> Did you know it was me? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Well, like, I can see your face. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was hilarious. So Jess was did a net. So you were wearing clothes that I normally wear. So I've never felt so seen, honestly. <laughs> like, like, like... The stuff that you all, like, um, said, because, you know, there were also phrases thrown around that I say a lot, apparently, which I did, a lot of them I didn't realise until Saturday night. So you were did a net, you had, like, um, we, we I've copied you with uh, some of the tops, so you wore one of those tops, similar pants to what I've got, and um, your earrings were the same as mine, you had a scrunchie, and you had your wig on, and Jess was, like... Honestly, I think you should have been an actress. It, it was like this wig was Very part kind. of you. So I'm so happy you've got it on today. Yep. It was like, she was like touching it. I'm not even kidding, Nico. She was like touching it as if it was hers. Like she would put it like behind her ear while she's talking <laughs> to people. And I would just observe from afar and be like, this girl is actually like, you're immersed in your role, you know? I was committed. Yeah, you were so committed. I was. And then we had Polly that was um, home, Nat. Yeah. So she was wearing like a full, um, 
God, I can't find words today. Like track pants yeah, and track hoodie suit. and... A f- whole track suit, the same colour. She had a torch on her forehead because once, just once, I had a torch on my forehead to thread my overlocker and I put it on Instagram. And she had, like, this, this sewing little kit, like, just these needles and... Um, slides as well yep. with socks. Yep. <laughs> yep. The attention to detail I, oh, was insane. next level. Insane. Even like her hair, like with the clip, Holly was um, fitness net or gym net and she had, she would have had the easiest one, right, because she's got a lot of fitness gear, but she had her hair the same as me. She had um, a microphone belt, but we all have that, so, you know. Mm. And she had peanut butter in her microphone belt because I used to have, I haven't in a long time because I've changed jobs, but I would have like a peanut butter slug every morning. <laughs> <laughs> But she purposely wore, like, the, you know, the long, white, long yeah. sleeve top. Like, she purposely wore that because you've got that. Yes, I do have that. You know, yeah, so... Yeah, so yeah. Um, oh, and the socks over tights. Socks over tights um, was was very special. I didn't realise that was a thing either. Straight and do hair, had the long, straight um, ponytail and very much embodied Jim Nat. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like bubbly and super friendly and all And then of that. we just had the cold nets. You know, like Serena was with a long puffer, Harry long puffer, um, Greg long puffer. Uh, socks over tights, yeah. Dan, yeah, socks over tights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. looked yeah. awesome. Yeah, and yeah. And Dan long puffer. Yeah. So, yeah, there were just lots of cold nets. I'm always cold. Well, the and reality. Because also, like we chatted about last week, uh, you have the big coat, which I think for most, um, like, normal heighted people is, like, to their knees, where it comes down to Is that you. why you brought it up last week? Because you knew it was going <laughs> to no, be No, I thing. didn't. Oh, really? No, 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 no. Because I, I walked into the staff room after teaching on Friday, so yeah. I haven't been a part of these conversations and all around dressing up like Nat, but a couple of the guys were talking about wearing stadium jackets. The stadium <laughs> jacket is one that yes. comes down to the ankles because it's freezing in a stadium in winter. And... Um, Holding on to a coffee cup and just kind of shuffling around, <laughs> and you know if they could if they could do those those three things if they could wear a long jacket, hold a coffee cup and just kind of shuffle. I don't shuffle. Then they could pull off a net. And I walked. I, I in, don't shuffle. Do I shuffle? Um, is uh, it because it's so long and it's in my ankles? I can't really. I can't take big steps. No, and it's probably because you can only see your feet at the oh. bottom. <laughs> You know what I mean? So you can only sort of see feet moving along. Um, but I walked into this and I was like, what are you doing? This sounds incredible. And like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we might we might try and dress up as Nat. And I was like, I'm in. And so... <laughs> All into the point where you got a wig. Well, my plan was to grab one of Greg's big jackets and to yeah. do the same, just have a coffee cup and then maybe look at getting a wig just because I'm blonde. So, yeah, you know, yeah it's yeah. hard to put, pull that off. Um, but then I was chatting to Holly on Saturday and she was saying how Holly was going to do sort of like what you look like when you're at home sewing. Then Holly was talking about how she might do the gym thing. And I was like, do you know what? I'll do the midweek dinner net. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll do. I'll do that. We do go out for dinner a lot, eh? We do. Like we do. Do you know SC says that? Because like on Monday he's like, okay, which days are you out for dinner this week? And I'm like, um, Tuesday, Wednesday. And you really, and you really wanted to say, what are you talking about? I'm not. And then you're like, no, Tuesday. I'm out for dinner with Jess on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. I said to Greg, I've got a meeting with um with Nat. And it was a meeting. Like, I actually it, had it, actually, it actually was a Babes Listen meeting. And um, and then I said, uh, have you been to this place? You know, the, the dinner's really good there. He's like, I thought you had a meeting. And I was like, I had to eat. <laughs> yeah, we had to eat had something to eat. on this meeting. There's always food provided and wine. Always wine. Always wine. <laughs> good for creativity. Anyway, so that's that was kind of the backstory. But uh, what was really cool is just how much you appreciated it. Oh, I loved it. it Honestly, was I loved it. Adorable, just like how excited you were. Because <laughs> with the wrong person, you know, if you were to kind of like highlight what's unique about them, they could actually yeah. kind of be a little bit offended. Yeah. Whereas or it, self-conscious. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. not easily offended though. I think you're quite a safe person to do this with. But I highly recommend it if you want to kind of like 
honor a friend. Like get oh, a group yeah. of you Honestly, to dress I up. I was like honored. Like to you know for for you even you know you put it together on a Friday afternoon whatever. Still so much effort that I was so honored. Honestly, it like, was a lot of fun. The whole. But it was just hilarious. Like, I think you, like, you blew me away just with how much you were in character. Like, the whole night, Jess wasn't Jess. Like, she was Jess behind, like, Jess, she was dinner Jess, dinner Nat with the wig. And the wig was, like, her hair. Well, at one point, Holly decided that she might do a half pony half ponytail with my wig and I was like oh you're pulling my hair I was like whoa (laughs) and we were like that's not your hair actually not my hair it felt like it oh and also the things that I say Mm, like apparently I say sis all the time I say oh wow all the time I say absolutely not I knew that though absolutely not (laughs) yeah that is what you say it's a lot it's a lot of fun so now we want to do a party where we're all like dressing up as each other that I I cannot wait. Like Mo- a san- uh, like a secret Santa. Yes, yeah. So this is <clears throat> this is sort of the plan is to get a group of people, and then you like for secret Santa you would pull out like who you would be getting a gift for, but you've got to keep it on the down low. This is going to be who you're going to dress up as. Yeah, I love that. I'm just so curious to see like what a what are my kind of. Oh, I can tell you right away. Okay. The person will look so like put together. So tidy. The hair will be so perfect. Like, whether it will be, like, fully pulled back. Definitely fully pulled back. Definitely not down. Fully pulled back and either a bun or a perfect pony. Perfect pony. And uh, I guess it depends on what kind of dress they want to go as, whether it's, like, um, gym dress or um, casual dress or dinner dress. But, like, easy as. Okay. I guess because I see you all the time. Well, and I guess as soon as someone's walking in with the blonde wig... (laughs) <laughs> you know, I, I didn't realise until Saturday evening that I was probably one of the few blondes. Oh, you know? true. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, another thing that we talked about last week, not just uh, Nat's gigantic coat that she could shoplift with, we also spoke <laughs> about um, how you were soft launching your weirdness. And yes, I said yeah, yeah. to you, please tell us more about that because I absolutely love that kind of concept of, you know, sort of like easing people into what's a little bit quirky about you. So just a very quick recap from last week of what we're talking about. Okay. You want me to recap yep. our, what soft launching is? Yep, yep. <clears throat> so I, the way it came about is just I was saying I've been soft launching my weirdness at work because I'm working around people that I don't know and they don't know me and, you know, they, as far as they know, I'm quite normal. <laughs> but I've just been soft launching my weirdness. Where so, are you at with that? Are we well, doing any more kind of weirdness? Uh, I've only been in the office once this week and there weren't many of us. Um, There's a couple of people like away or sick or whatever. So um, I haven't really had my full opportunity to really go further in my self-launch. Yeah, you need an audience for a hard launch, right? Yeah, so it's kind of stalled um, quite hard to uh, keep launching your weirdness over email or on calls. (laughs) But on calls, I do try and like... Um, Because, you know, things can be quite, like, serious. So Mm. I did try and be like, hey, it's hailing outside here. (laughs) Where are you? (laughs) You know? It was hailing, you said. Was it hailing at your house? It was hailing so hard. Yeah. Um, It was definitely hailing in your house because we live quite close together. (laughs) I believe it was, but I did have a nap yesterday and it might have been during that. Do you know why I said that to Shani? I was like, did you see the hail? And she was like, I must have been sleeping. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, anyway, so I have, it's my soft launch has uh, stalled, but I plan to pick it back up from next week. I think that, oh, I'm very excited to kind of hear how that goes, really. Yeah. So soft launching your weirdness. So just so we're, we're kind of um, familiar with, oh, right. you know, the whole, it, yeah. the whole weird, like what is weird? I've come up with... From a, from searching um, Google, I've come up with a few definitions of weird. So I've got um, someone who is <laughs> of strange. You Google this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. I like to do my research. Um, Can you take her seriously right now with this wig on? <laughs> yeah. Well, I will say I am really hot. <laughs> Like, seriously. You should take 
this up. I never wear this, my jersey in the this podcast. This wig is you know, well. That would be a lot of admin. I'll I'll leave the jumper yeah, on and I'll just has to take the wig off. Experience an early <laughs> menopause. Um, so weird. Uh, someone who is of strange or extraordinary character. Odd. Fantastic. <laughs> what? Odd and fantastic. Yeah, odd and fantastic. A weirdo is an odd, eccentric, or unconventional person. Okay. And then I've also got a couple of definitions from the Urban Dictionary. And the first is that weird is a word used by basic, insecure, boring, cookie cutter ass <laughs> bitches to describe someone better than them. <laughs> <laughs> to describe someone better than them. And lastly, someone who isn't afraid to be themselves, a person who likes to be humorous and make people laugh. People who like to yes, have a good time. Me. Sometimes weird people are the best kind of people. Amen, sister. So we're going to talk today about how weird is a really, really, really positive thing and how to maybe connect with, embrace and express your weirdness just a little bit more. <laughs> she so, says that she touches her hair. <laughs> the I, fake. Listen, yeah. <laughs> perfectionist, I want to look good at all times, even when looking ridiculous. Um, now, here's the sad truth. Uh, for many people, their greatest fear is not death or heights or public speaking or poisonous snakes. The thing that people fear most is being themselves. Oh. Oh, damn. We're afraid to say what's really on our mind. We're afraid of being judged by other people oh, for yeah. pursuing our passions. We're afraid of showing our true emotions because we don't want to give off the slightest whiff of vulnerability. Can you imagine if we all spoke our minds, like, 100% of the time? Mm, it potentially could be chaotic. I think, I think it would be so chaotic. Yeah, I feel like somewhere we could find kind of a middle ground, you know, somewhere Because it's, there. Um, who was it? I think it was Carlos saying it a while ago, how New Zealanders tend to be um, very much like that. Like, we don't um, speak our mind quite as much. Like, we're... Um, I also had a client who is from overseas as well, and I remember her saying that, um, like, we're always... Like, say, I'll be like, oh, my God, I love your top. And she's like, even though you don't like her top? You know oh. what I mean? Like, Or, like, you'll always compliment. Yeah, Nico's nodding his head. Oh, really? So you'll always, like, as soon as you see someone, you will you feel like you need to give them a compliment about something. But I don't really fully agree with that. I think oh. I definitely do that, but I mean it. Oh, like, I mean I it, too. Mean it. Yeah, I, yeah. I Like, I, like a, yeah, I guess because we like clothes, though. So, but maybe not everyone likes clothes. I don't really know. Yeah. I don't know, but I think the compliment thing is true, though, right? Like, I think um, we tend to, maybe Kiwis tend to give... Um, I don't know. What do you like? Reckon? Disingenuine Maybe compliments. Maybe just just in order to like for small chat. Oh, because I remember you her nodding? saying. I remember her oh, saying like she, um, you know, was at the party and then this person was like, "Oh my god, I love your dress," blah blah blah, and then she didn't say it back because she doesn't like her dress. Yeah, right? yeah. And then I was like, "That's fair. You don't have to tell this person no. you don't like her dress, but just." Maybe don't tell her you don't like her dress, yeah. you know. But she, well, she didn't, but she just said it was awkward because she didn't, like, return any compliments. Did she say thank you so much? Um, I don't know, maybe. That could have been what was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, it's you don't, role play. It's role yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love your top. <laughs> See, that's awkward. That's awkward. You just just say thank you. You don't need to repay. I'm sure she said thank you. <laughs> Why is being weird so good for us, Nat? It is the key well, to happiness. Well, I think happiness. it's about being yourself, right? And no, yes. like, there's no such thing as normal. I'm sure there's actually normal. I'm sure there's quite vanilla people out there. <laughs> is there? there? There would be. Or is there? Or are those vanilla people just not themselves? I think that's... I think they're not themselves. A great question. <laughs> is is actually are some people um, a lot more eccentric or are they less inhibited to be freaky? Yeah, I think it's hard when you haven't been given the, I guess not the permission, but you haven't felt like you've got the permission to be yourself. Mm. And if you've never had that permission, then you don't really know what you're really like. Because I've been told before we're people say, I'm way more weird with you around because I uh, maybe, like, give them permission to be themselves and to be 
quote unquote weird, you know? Yeah. But if the other person doesn't, if other people around you don't give you that permission, especially mm. like in a workspace, mm. then you're probably going to dumb yourself down. Mm. But if you do that everywhere, like at home, at work, everywhere, then you just never know what you really like. Yeah, but like you were talking about the kind of soft launching, <laughs> you know, and that's something that you've communicated as being quite conscious of it. But yeah, yeah. on some level, I think we all do that unconsciously, which For is sure. we kind of test our how's this going to land, you yeah. know, sort of like maybe throw a little bit of a you know, m- might be throwing a little bit of a joke or a little, a little bit, bit of a wild card, a little bit of this. And like, if someone if someone picks it up and and keeps going yeah. with it, you then you know you're kind of you're vibing. Then you're like, oh, I can take it for that. Yeah, ooh, they're yeah. taking it for that. Oh, yeah. Because you, know? you yeah. know when you meet someone like you've never met them before, and all of a sudden you are on some crazy <laughs> planet of you know humor yes. and just like banter, and you've never met them before, and then with other people you might have known them for a really long time but like it's kind of like every time you sort of like try and try and get your weirdness out there it just never lands they never take it anywhere and you just keep talking about the weather (laughs) I do have someone like that in my life really yeah just talk about the weather I'd love to know who that is That's a chat for another day. But um, now I would like to hear, Nat, what makes you a little bit weird? (laughs) Do you think it's that you laugh at everything I say, even when I'm being serious? Is that what makes you quirky? Um, What makes me weird? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You tell me. You're you're all around me all the time. (laughs) What makes me weird? I think I... uh, Let me have a think. Uh, I think I do speak my mind. (laughs) 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 Nico just put a wig on too. (laughs) It's a Simpsons Marge wig. It's it's blue and it's massive. We're going to post a photo for you. Um, Focus, Nat. Focus. So I think I speak my mind maybe more than some, do you think? Yeah, yeah, I... Not, I never <coughs> offend people. No. But, like, if, say, for example, I've got a wedgie, mm-hmm. I'll say it. Or if I really need to burp or yep. fart, I'm yep. genuinely going to tell you. Yep. Yep. You know? And that's Having quite... Done that at work, which is so hard. And do you know what's really awful is when you hold your farts in and then your, your stomach hurts so much from holding them in? For example, this is the kind of chat that she offers people. What's really good about that, though, is um, is that in that way you offer a space for people to also kind of talk about their bodily functions <laughs> with absolutely no shame. Well, yeah, and I don't like, like at work I haven't been doing that. Like I think I would test it out, especially because mm. I'm in an environment with just men. And you know what men can be like sometimes, like, oh, girls don't. Girls don't do that. Mm. And it's like, let me, let me tell you more about that. Mm. Have you talked like about even, periods yet? No, I haven't. That's but, a net special. But um, but I like I haven't tried not to type of thing, you know. Like when I like or like even when I grab a tampon, I don't hide it, mm. you know. So I mm. do feel like I just kind of maybe the reason why I'm quote unquote weird is the fact that I'm quite honest with where I'm at. Mm. <laughs> like bodily. Yeah. Have you, you know? always been like mm. that? Um, I think so, yeah. I think I have. Mm. Like, I always have been with boyfriends and stuff, you know, like um, how some people, like, have never, like, maybe pooed or farted in front of their partner. <laughs> Why, it's a thing. No, sorry, carry on. <laughs> have yep. you? Will you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 18 years and I've never farted in front of Greg. No, that's not my thing. I've But, like, some people would have done that. Yeah, you know what that's... I mean? that's Wow, way to keep the romance alive. Well, you know, like how I guess this might be more of an old school thing, but like, yeah. Anyway, I would do that quite early on in the relationship. Just to backtrack a little bit, because I don't think I can get past this. You said fart or poo in front of your boyfriend, (laughs) and I just—I don't know if you want to go there. Well, you just leave the door open. That I've never done. Well, there you go. That's what I mean. You probably... Have you done that? No. No. What? You've never left the door open. No. Like, you're in a hotel room. No. You're busting. No. You don't have no. the time to shut the no. door. No. And do you know why? And honestly, there's no judgment. There's absolutely oh, no, I don't no judgment. Um, I just have never, ever, 
ever, that's never been something that I would ever feel comfortable doing. And yeah, 18 years. We've had, a, we've had two kids together. I'm like picturing you pooping right now. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the well, the door is always closed, you know so you would never though? see. Like, you, when we first started our friendship, you would never talk about that. But no. now you'll tell me if you're doing number twos. Yeah, like, well, I'm going to do number twos. Yeah. You know, like that evolved. Yeah, thank do you, you very much for that. Do you think that evolved because I, was, because I was so open with my... Okay, well, that's great. Absolutely. I've, I've never in my life talked about <laughs> periods and poo as much as I have since our friendship started. <laughs> and that is not a lie. And See, Dan, that makes me feel good. And like, it, I feel like I've, I've, I could die and I feel like I've left a good impact. You've given me the freedom <laughs> to talk about bodily functions. We kind of had turns at sort of giving a little bit of a, um, like a few words for Nat at her party on Saturday night and went around the room and um, for each of us in character, we had to do it as someone in character. But then it got to one of the PTs and he what started, um, he started. I don't know whether to say his name or not, but he started telling a story about how the two of us, something about us talking about poo in the staff room and we, we were kind of like... Really? We were like, what? Oh, yes, I do remember that happening and we were all like, huh? huh? That's like, but we I do that every day. Yes, because we do like, it all the time, and he yeah. must have heard us once. Well, he heard us yeah. once, and then he probably thought he was, like, in on some, <laughs> you know, secret chat, and we're like, oh, no, please. literally, every I time. I felt really bad when we were all like, huh? <laughs> I, don't get, I don't get the joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get how that was special. <laughs> but, you know, so I think that's what makes me weird. But what about you? Uh, so I, I had a little think about this. In, in looking at sort of like embracing what's um, a little bit quirky about yourself and I've chatted about it before but I think the fact that I played Barbies until I was 14 is something that does make me a little bit kind of um, quirky. I do also really like to watch documentaries about serial killers right before I go to sleep. Yeah, that, that freaks me out a little bit. Yeah, so I'll fall asleep watching um, things about... Do you do that every night? Not every night, but I find that, like, if I'm away and staying in a hotel room, I I tend to do it almost kind of like because it gives me a sense of, like, familiarity or a like sense of calm or... Yeah, I think so. What? A sense of calm? So wait, so you're going to... But, like, you're more likely to get killed. Like, movies is normally in a hotel room, right? Yeah, but they're not real. <laughs> Were you ever scared as a kid? Yeah, like, yeah, scared yeah. of the dark, yeah, scared yeah, of yeah. killers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Really? Yeah. So, but now you're all good with doing that right before bed? I'm still a little bit scared of the dark. But you, you literally... Like, I've slept in a hotel room with her, so two different beds, right? <laughs> and... <laughs> Just put this, just to put this. How straight. come you didn't leave the door open when you used the bathroom when we stayed in the same hotel room, huh? Because you were, you're not there. Nah, I'm not. There you go. Yeah, nah. Um, I put, and I don't think I pooed that weekend. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was like, I, I am so constipated. My stomach is so sore. Yeah. Because when I travel, I often don't can't poo. Especially when you're staying in the same room, yeah. you know, as someone else too. Like, no, and I, I don't think I would have because, like, the bathroom was right there and then it was, like, our beds. Yeah. You know, like, I wouldn't have pooed there, I don't no. think. No. Um, but I don't think I did poo that whole weekend, if I'm completely honest. I do remember having quite a sore stomach. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so we were, like, in, a, like, single bed each, right? And then, so we're, like, chatting and then Jess is, like... Um, all right, so um, good night. I'm just going to put my serial killer documentary on and uh, and I'm just, like, watching... <laughs> she's just watching it until she falls asleep. <laughs> like, that gives her familiarity and it gives her comfort in a hotel room. Maybe you are a serial killer. I remember asking, actually, I think this was why, because I was kind of like, are you OK if I kind of watch something on my phone till I fall asleep? You know, I find that quite asking helpful. Asking me? Yeah, and you were like, yeah, it's no problem. Of course. Yeah. I wouldn't mind. Yeah. I just was, like, so shocked that you you were like, it's actually, like, a, a horror movie or, you know, it's not a horror movie, but it was, like, a serial killer doco. Yeah, I think that's what makes me a little bit... I mean, I'm not the only one interested in that no, particular no, no, no. genre, but I think I think the time of day that I watch it is maybe a little bit different. What is happening to my voice? <laughs> You've, you're net. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what else makes you quirky? There's um, more to it. Well, I'm sure there's a lot more, but I think, like you said, uh, potentially... 
potentially other people might be or the people close to you might be a better kind of judge of character, yeah. you know, yeah. with that. Greg and I have talked about, you know, what what do we think we're going to be like when we're older, what older than we are now, you know, like in our kind of 60s, 70s and stuff. And I was like, you're definitely going to be a grumpy old man. And he's like, you're <gasps> definitely going to be the eccentric weirdo. <laughs> you're going to be yes. the community weirdo. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> the community weirdo. Yeah, that's what he's predicted <laughs> like, for my future. Those are the most fun. I have an auntie like that, and I love her so much. Like, she is the most fun to hang out. She just says the wildest things. And honestly, I'm just like, like, I just laugh, like, kind of like how I laugh with you the whole time. Mm. I laugh the whole time I hang out with her. But I kind of, like, egg it on. Like, I'm like, yeah. would you do this? <laughs> Are you going to do that now? Oh, look at this guy. He's hot, eh? <laughs> Is that what you do with me? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting though because I I I think for me like I've I've always had a you know kind of this um, sort of weirdness if you will right, but also I'm quite um, uh, self conscious sometimes and uh, was quite shy growing up. So it would only come out if I was really really comfortable yeah. around people. I think what's happening is, is as I get older, you you kind of maybe embrace who you are a little bit more and so that side comes out a bit more. And you care less about what people think of you. And you care less about, you know, being judged in that way. So what I looked at was sort of like, if you are someone who has a little bit of weirdness that you are keeping to yourself, uh, how can you learn to embrace it and share it with the world? And Soft I've got launch it. Soft launch it, yes. <laughs> so we've got seven tips and tricks oh, dang. for soft launching your weirdness. Really? Mm-hmm. You put these together or did you find them? I found them. Wow. Um, so the first one is to embrace your shortcomings. So if you want to live an authentic life, you have to embrace every part of who you are. That means being content with both your strengths and your weaknesses. Wow, your voice is going. (coughs) So, okay, so embrace your shortcomings. I also think, like, if you're... So, like, kind of, like, embrace your weaknesses, right? Mm. And just being honest about them. Especially, I don't know, like, in a group thing, sometimes you can get... um, It can be quite daunting if you're about to do a game or something and you're like, oh, I'm really bad at this game or whatever. Um, I also think if you put it all out there, then no one's got anything to really make fun of you because you're like, I know that. Yeah, you've and owned I've it already, first. I've already owned yeah. that. You know, yeah. like you, you don't, you, you're not being nasty by pointing it out because mm. I already have. Mm, mm. You know, and this. Um, so like, we lived in Dublin, and the Irish sense of humour is very self-deprecating, oh, and right. it is very much about making fun of yourself. Mm. And I think in I that, that way, yeah, and it's really freeing. Like yeah, you said, yeah. where if you just kind of like if you own um, sort of what's a bit odd about you or um, you know, like an embarrassing story or whatever. If you own that and make fun of it, it's fun for everyone and you mm. don't have to feel any shame about it. Yeah, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so the second one is pursue your passions. One key trait that most unique people share is the willingness to pursue their passions, both personally and professionally. And do you know what? A lot of people don't pursue their passions because of fear of being judged. Yeah. You know, like, I have I feel like I've... Um, I guess, oh, what's an example? But, like, if, if I'm going to do something, or, like, say, posting on social media, for example, mm-hmm. you you know, you're being judged, and especially when you're self-employed, it's kind of, like, something that you, um, I don't want to say should do, but, like, it helps your business, right? <clears throat> when I first started, I used, I used to get quite self-conscious about talking to the camera and what are my friends going to think and what are the people that I used to go to school with you were going to think and what are my family and blah, blah, blah. And then once you let go of that, it's so freeing because you're like, do you know what? I'm actually pursuing something mm. and you're out there protecting your whole mm. um, uh, perception of yourself. Good for you, but mm. you're not going to grow, mm. you know. So once you like kind of put that into perspective, and you're like, "Well, I'm putting myself out there. I'm going to look like a dick," and I've looked like a dick online. Like Essie's posted <laughs> pretty horrific stuff of me, but like it's got people laughing, so who cares? But you know, like I and I've I'm sure I've posted like I I'm posted things that I would cringe about. Like if I went way back, I would cringe so hard about some of the stuff that I've posted or whatever. 
but at least I've gave, given it a go mm. and I've given myself to be to grow in that space rather than just be so like frozen of from fear you know mm, mm. It, that sounds very freeing just to actually kind of start to do that and yeah. then and then you've got no you've got nothing holding you back from doing that yeah but also that's very hard to start and it depends on the people around you as well like if you've got people around you be like oh why did you post that yeah you know then you're like, well, I'm never gonna, gonna do that again like yeah if, if your nearest and closest are, are doing that Mm. I say that to you, then you're less likely to do it. Did you have people around you that were really encouraging? Is Essie, that what yeah. made it? Sorry, I just yeah. touched your hand. <laughs> um, Essie, yeah, definitely. I'm I'm quite far um, over your side. I used to I used to um, uh, like re- do lots of retakes. Mm. You know, not as much anymore. You know, well, n- neither do we. Like when we do stuff together, we don't do any retakes. No. You know. No. One hit wonder. Yeah. Not one hit wonder. That's not the saying. Yeah, it is. Is it not? Maybe. One hit wonder, yeah. Maybe. Don't um, waste your time trying to make it. It's the, the 80 is the new 100. 80% is the oh, new Oh, I love that. That's 80 is the new 100. Is it quite old? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that would have been helpful for me to hear five <laughs> years ago. <laughs> well, it's kind of like don't wait for something to be 100% finished. That's what we used to say. Yes, you know, we used to say every time we made an e-book. Mm. PDF or whatever, like mm. to sell. We'd be like, look, the 80 is the new 100. It can't be perfect. Otherwise, you'll always work on it. You'll never launch it. I mean, that's the whole perfectionist thing is yeah. just being absolutely paralysed by needing to get yeah. 100%. Um, so third up in being able to embrace your uniqueness, your weirdness, is avoid the urge to judge others. Mm. So you'll never be able to embrace your uniqueness if you constantly judge others for doing the same. That's such a good point. Yep. That is such a good point. Imagine if you thought about that then every time you're passing judgment on someone else. Yeah. That that is taking away and the opportunity for you to be fully who you are. I guess it's kind of like the example of when people say have judged people like me, for example, for posting things. Mm. They're not they're kind of restricting themselves. Yeah, yeah, I like that's that. such a good point. What you said about sort of um, that decision for you to no longer listen to the people who were keeping themselves safe. Mm. You know, there's a really good quote. I've been trying to think of it for the last couple of minutes, and it's not really coming to mind. But not the one that hit Wonder One? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I don't feel like I'm on a, on a quote roll Aww. today. But it's basically saying that, um, you know, I don't want to hear from people who aren't kind of in the arena with me. Oh, I think I know the one it you're might talking be, about. Yeah, it might be from Brene Brown. So it's basically saying, like, you know, it's it's really lots of people will sit in the stands or, you know, sit yeah, in the stadium yeah. and judge what you do. But actually, if you decide that I, the only people I'm going to get advice from are those people who have done what I've done, mm. are doing what I'm doing, then you know, you let go of listening to exactly that, which is everyone who's kind of keeping themselves safe and judging others in that way. That's not a good opinion to be yeah, kind yeah. of... Yeah, I know that's your, the quote you're talking about, but I don't know, like I can't say it off the top of my head. It's kind of like when people um, judge, but there's different. There's a difference between feedback and judge in group fitness space. Mm-hmm. When people judge some, like a group fitness instructor... But, like, straight up judge without even having any kind of knowledge background. Mm. Now I always think, you try it. Mm. <laughs> you give it mm. a go. Mm. <laughs> give it a whirl. Mm. See how you go if I you think, do any better. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's true in, in anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, I do want to say, though, like, obviously feedback of, like, um, a class. It's different when you can see it's coming from a bad place, from, like, a judgmental place rather than, like, a constructive um, place. Well, if, if you're not offering... Um, solutions or if you don't have the expertise to support that person improving what they do yeah, yeah. then it's not it's, it's not it's not helpful no nah. you know true that sis uh, number four take more risks so the act of taking risks makes you a unique person in today's world most people retreat to safety because they don't Ooh. possess the self-assurance to step into the unknown when you take risks you give yourself permission to fail and to grow you're showing the courage that's required to live a unique life i think you do this very well thank you even though what about you you do too 
Yeah, I think even though it might not naturally be your comfort zone. No, no. You know, like you, you really stretch yourself to kind of give things a go and, um, you know, very much kind of like a learning mindset of like, what can I learn from this? You know, what what can I... Yeah, but like, yeah, you're right, I'm not, that's not my natural state. Mm. But like I say, I think it really helps when the people close to you are either doing the same or encouraging you to do it mm. because otherwise it's... That can be really hard to break from. Mm. You know what I mean? So top tip, hang out with people who take risks or just bring the best out of you, you know, who, who don't bring you down. Cheerlead, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. That's always... Cheerleaders. We all need cheerleaders. But also, why would you not be happy for the people in your life when they're giving things a go and... Jealousy. Is that it? Don't you think? Maybe. Because it's like... Oh, I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, well, that I wouldn't do that is is potentially like a fear-based thing of kind of like, I'm worried about what's going to happen to you if that doesn't work out. But, well, yeah. that's kind of, that's, yeah. that's a you problem then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? But jealousy of, um, you know, when someone puts someone, someone else down. Yeah. A, 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 a lot of the time it's well, down that to their own Well, actually, good segue, because that leads on to the next one, which is stop comparing yourself to others. So yeah, not which is just, hard. <laughs> yeah, it is hard, but not just on social media, because there's a lot of chat about comparison with social mm. media, but just noticing potentially when you're doing that in real-life situations. Yeah. And like we've talked about before, and many, many, many times, no one has their shit together. Like, literally, no one has every part yeah. of their life sorted and they're thriving. You know, like... It, it looks like they are. But some of them looks like they've got everything together, right? Yeah, like their <laughs> finances sorted. Yeah. They've got healthy, happy kids. They've got a great marriage. They're fit. They eat, eat, they eat healthy. They socialise, you know, all of that. Um, I call bullshit. Yes, I agree. <laughs> so here's how to... Uh, also get into your weird vibe. That was like the longest intro ever for just being able to say, avoid seeking validation from others. Aww. Unique people don't need validation from anyone except themselves. That's really hard. That's a huge work on for me. Is it? I actually want to talk about that with my therapist next time I see her. Okay. That's on my, sometimes I make a list in my head of what I want to cover with her, but that's a huge one for me. Is it reassurance? Yeah, I need reassurance. Okay. It's something I've noticed. Yeah. Okay. Like I thrive when I get reassurance. Okay. Which I don't think is particularly healthy. Um, no, I don't think it's healthy to always seek it because then it means the opposite is true. So if I don't have reassurance or say if, um, I don't know what kind of example, then I can feel quite down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a big work on for me. So tell me a little bit more about reassurance, though. Do you mean in terms of I'm I'm making a decision, please reassure me that I've done the right thing? Or or more so like, like I find that I thrive when SC will tell me I'm doing well. So I need to know that he that he knows that I'm doing... Or that he's, he, he needs to... I thrive if he tells me, yeah, you're, you're doing well, or that was a good job or whatever. And I think it comes down to, like, it'll come down to my childhood. Look, I'll talk about it after I see my therapist. She'll probably unlock some boxes. <laughs> she does that well. <coughs> but I think it comes down to um, when I was younger, I had a, um, I guess, not conventional childhood. So I would only bring the things that were good about school and stuff to mum so that she would be proud, so that anything that wasn't good, I wouldn't bring it to her because I didn't want to to bother her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because a lot was going on in her life. Not that she ever didn't want to see. But that's why I've said this on the podcast before, how I've never, I would never tell her if I got a C or a B. I would only tell her about the A's because, which I honestly, when I was younger, I didn't realise I was doing, but I would just not tell, the, tell her about these things. But it was because I didn't want to, and that's something that my therapist told me, but I didn't want to burden her with more trouble. So just be like, look, I've got it all together. I'm all good at school. And that's why I guess I, part of the reason why I worked so hard to be 
the perfect kid at school, you know? Yeah. So that wasn't about uh, taking only the good stuff to her because you wanted that praise. Was that about... I also wanted that praise, yeah. So when I gave her, when I said, you know, I got an A or I got top of class, she would always be like, oh, my God, that's amazing, you know. So I think I seeked that more and more. Yeah. And I probably have taken that through my whole adulthood. Yeah, because in that as well is the reassurance for you that she's okay. Yes, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. So, well, that's, yeah, I mean, it makes sense why you do that then because there's a lot of positive stuff. That comes with it. Yeah. Yeah. So what I want to ask then is that... (laughs) Um, Getting therapized to like it. Uh, no, no, sorry, no, I don't. No, I, no, I, no, yeah. no, I know you're not. I know you're not. She's not a therapist. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. But I'm curious. So I'm, what I'm curious about then is, are you someone when you're told you can't do it, you won't be successful, that you go, let me show you that that's motivating to you. I think it is motivating. Okay. I think when I say I seek reassurance, I seek it from like a small number of people. Okay. You yeah. know, like I yeah. I think when I can make my mum proud, it mm. means a lot to me. When I can make Essie proud, it means a lot to me. And same for, say, like you, Shani, mm. but that will probably be it. Mm. Mm. You know? Mm. So I think, yeah, that would be it. Mm. Yeah. But like for you, from you and Shani, that comes all the time because you, you two are so, like, positive to me and you're so kind and stuff. But I feel like, um, I guess with SC, he's much more honest. (laughs) You know what I mean? So maybe I seek it more there and I seek it with my mum, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's something that I actually have been, that's why I just went on this rant. I've I've been wanting to talk about that with my therapist. I think that's really cool. I think that would resonate with a lot of people. I, you know, I asked the the whole kind of like, uh, you know, when someone says you can't do it, that 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 kind of motivates you to prove them wrong. I ask that because I have noticed that that's really motivating for Greg, mm. and I recognise that actually that does nothing for me. Okay, I I work much better when I have people around me who are positive and encouraging, and when I'm told that I can't do something. Actually, I think I'm more, I I'm more believe the same it. as you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, it, yeah, yeah. Like if if someone, but it would have to be someone important to me. So like if they, oh, you know, right. if yeah. they, if Essie yeah. said, um, you can definitely do this, mm. then that brings me up so much. If he says, oh, look, you're, you're, I don't know, it's not going well, you're not doing mm. too great there, then I would believe it mm. because it's come from him. Mm. But would you, would you believe it if it came from like, what's it called? Like a, um, like an acquaintance, acquaintance, kind of or someone like a little, someone more two removed. degrees away. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to have a think about it. That's interesting. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have to have a think about it. I just, and I don't know. I just feel like I've just recognised that I'm someone who does very well in very positive environments. Yeah, yeah. same though, same. Yeah. Whereas, so you're you're the same. Then you feel like do you feel like you you seek validation from others? Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit of a people pleaser, really. Mm. You know, like okay, I, yeah. I I like when. I like when people are happy and they're happy with me and yeah, yeah I feel very, I, I feel quite distressed if I know someone is um, hurt by what I've done or they're not happy yeah, with, yeah. you know, kind of um, whatever. So, yeah, I'm, I'm probably, probably similar in that way. <laughs> I just feel like she's still wearing the wig. <laughs> You're one? like talking so seriously yeah. with this full on wig on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really hot. Like, I actually feel like it's moved. cooking my brain. You didn't have... To, you what? You feel like it's what? Cooking my brain. <laughs> Seriously. That's not a thing. Um, also, it hasn't moved because, like, on Saturday night, it was going back a lot, so you had quite the receding hairline. Yeah. Today, today, it's, like, perfect. It, yeah. I think it's... Is that because of the um, headphones? Yeah, so really I just needed to put a headband <laughs> on with it and it would have been totally fine on, on Saturday night. Hey, would you like to hear the seventh and <gasps> yeah, final sorry. tip for embracing your uniqueness? <laughs> yes, Enough please. about my uh, receding hairline. Uh, so find other people who embrace your uniqueness. Life, <laughs> life is too short to judge others, but it's also too short to spend time with people who judge you. Top tip from the internet. Your vibe attracts your tribe. 
You've heard of that quote. Oh, I do have a quote. <laughs> your vibe attracts your tribe. Oh, wow. Your vibe attracts your tribe. So whatever you put out, Can you'll you get Can you tell back. me on another note... What is it about the wig that you really love? Because I know on Saturday you said you actually really liked wearing it. I like You were sad when you took it off. Yeah, we got in the car to go home. We dropped Nat off <laughs> and, you know, I was kind of, I probably should take the wig off, <laughs> but I didn't really want to, you know? But, like, that's, that, like, is amazing. Why is that? I think I just <laughs> like to play different characters. I, this I need to do more. We, we've talked about this. We need to go to acting classes. This is exactly it. <gasps> Let's yeah. do it. Yeah, this Let's is exactly it. Let's definitely do it. Um, I want to be an actress too. I think it would just be so fun to kind of explore that. Definitely I've spoken to Ben about this. We actually, we, yeah, I went as yeah. far as emailing a place about doing some uh, classes Were you going to invite me? Absolutely. Oh, thank goodness. Just couldn't find a night to do it. But that will keep you all updated with our, with so, our drama lessons. So wait, did they reply, give you nights? It's probably a... Yeah, it was on, we can have off here. Well, no, it was just it was on the same night as um, my kid plays football. So, oh, okay. Because um, I know Essie's brother wants to as well. He's oh, quite cool. he like wants to get into acting. So I was yeah. going to do it with him initially. That's very cool. So we cool. should all do it together. That's very cool. And I think Shani wants to as well. Well, listen, we could anybody get, else join yeah, us. We could get a whole. We, we could, could get potentially a whole get a full class for this company. Full, literally a full class. I'm just I'll sign up if there's dress up. That's I mean, really I think what I'm after. I'm sure that's like your choice. <laughs> the other issue with this wig is that there are very long, dark hairs. Do you know what? She left so much hair in the bathroom, but like on the toilet seat, it actually looked like someone had like really long pubes. <laughs> I don't know. How did you manage that? Did like get caught in like your butt crack or something? <laughs> no, I think it was it was early on in the night, so it was kind of you know it was fresh out of its you know sort of like you know, sort of Bag. packaging. And so it was, you know, it was just free. It was free. And all of those non-very attached <laughs> pieces of hair were like, wow. You've got like a growth in the back of your head. I think your bun is smaller today than it was on Saturday. But oh, Saturday really? was a bigger growth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. How else would you go about that, though? Maybe a low bun. Low bun. Oh, you should have done a low bun. Yeah, but I don't care that much. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly thought that I would. This is this is what I thought. I thought I would wear the wig to Nat's party. Do you know you've had a hair in your eye this whole time? No. Nope. Okay. Sorry, um, carry on. <laughs> I would wear the wig to Nat's party, and it would be like, oh, that's funny. Um, and then know, take it off. And then take it off. I actually thought you were going to take it off. Quite I quickly. thought I was going to take it off pretty early into the night, and um, I didn't. I enjoyed it. Way I too honestly, much. I think I laughed ninety percent of the night, and probably eighty five percent of that was to <laughs> Jess, because you were hilarious. Well, this is it. This is the whole point of, you know, you find people who find the weird stuff that you do funny and you'll always have a sense of belonging. <laughs> you know? This is why I love the fitness industry. Can you wear weird this people. Oh, I think I'd like to purchase another one. Like uh, like a blonde one? Uh, maybe. I want to get a blonde one because you know what? I've actually thought about going blonde years ago when I was you younger. You should definitely just try out one of those wigs from Look Sharp. <laughs> Give it a go first, see if you like it. Okay, shall we wrap up? Yeah. Yeah, you do This it. hair is rogue. It keeps going into your eye. Do I wrap up because I'm trying Nat. to play you today? You added in that, yes. Um, or just start me off. What, start me off with something. What do you, what do you mean? Um, oh, thanks for listening to us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Babes Listen, Instagram. What is our Instagram handle? Um, at Babes Listen. Yeah, we, there we go. That's all you need to say, really. Wow, this, that, that job is hard. It is, I tell you. Wow. <laughs> She's opened Did you and not closed. Mind opening? Um, well, so Nat's opened and closed. 96 times. 96 <laughs> times. I've done it once. That's a lot. <laughs> That's wild, eh? Yeah. Two, two now out of 97. Two minutes to go. No, you... two times. Oh, two yeah. times. Oh, two. I thought I was getting Nico two. Nico does, like, hand, hand yeah. gestures to us for, like, yeah. when we, like, to, like, last two minutes long to go. to go. Two minutes no, to go. No, it's two takes now out of 97. We need okay. to do something big for our 100. I'm not very good at closing, I'll be honest. <laughs> Because I don't know how you actually it's finish you were it. because awkward. Yeah, okay, I am Do it again, awkward. do it again, but be less awkward. Just be, like, sharp and just go straight to the point. Uh, babes, listen Instagram. See ya. <laughs>